What's up everybody? I am here with Luke, one of two owners for Ross Monster. They build obviously these monstrosities of vans, trucks, apparently buses now, pretty much anything you can throw at them, they will figure it out and build it. What's behind us is a their show van. We're gonna get a full tour of the show van. We're gonna go over a little bit of pricing. We're gonna go a little bit over just everything about Ross Monster because I have the man that knows every in and out of all of their vans. Uh, the last many videos, I should say, I have to say massive thank you to Kyle. I will make sure that I put all of Kyle's information it's gonna be like right here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the description below as well. So go check out his YouTube because he lives in a van full time and he's a rad dude and he does rad stuff. Uh, this thing is a just beast of a vehicle. You take it to all the shows that you go to, yep. whether it's Overland Expo and Flagstaff, Overland Van Expo at all the various locations they have. We just were at Colorado Tiny House Fest. This is what you, you built this for that exactly. Yeah. Okay. If somebody came with a price, like, like I want to pay you this though, would you sell it? Yeah, I think retail on this is right around 220. Okay. Um, and the fun thing about building show vans each year is we get to both work with our vendors to showcase new innovative things and put all the fun ideas that we see our clients do throughout the year into one vehicle. In my tours, I usually get to the outside at the end. So we're going to talk about the outside at the end, but you did partner up with one of my favorite you know, companies, which is Illuminous, yeah. which is what I've been leaning on. Yeah. So you did Illuminous bumpers, racks, ladders, tire carriers, everything. Everything. Great. So we're going to get all that at the end. And then also at, towards the end, we're going to talk about this crazy suspension that I just took a ride in, or I drove it actually. <laughs> so let's go inside and check out the inside. I usually work from front to back. Does the two seats in the front swivel? Absolutely. Okay, you don't have to show them. I would think people would know what a swivel seat looks like I think so. if they've watched enough van tours. But also at the front here, you have something that I love, the company, when you can demonstrate on how that operates. Yeah, so we have this folding shower here. Flips down. This little bag is for the shower curtain. But this system, you have your shower curtain. It magnets around the perimeter here. You got your hot and cold water. You got your sprayer and then it hooks to your ceiling. So this is a pretty cool take on being able to shower inside your van. Mm -hmm. And we're only using about three inches of your build. Okay. Um, this also works to shower outside. Or maybe wash off your feet, your yeah, bikes, spray, dog. Spray off your dog, yeah. whatever. This, I mean, I think this hose is like seven feet long or something. That's pretty good, I would say. Pulls way out. Now, that, what's that company? What's that product? Yeah, so this is the Tetra Van Shower. Tetra van. Tetra van. And I believe this is the Mark II, Mark II or? Yeah, so II? They, they made a small update to these um, and you know everything about it from the fit and finish to one of my favorite parts is this latch has a little bit of a cam latching function right here at the end. Okay. So this thing does not make any noise. We were just driving, road. I forgot it was in here. Yeah. It does not rattle. No. Opposite side of that, you did something that I haven't really seen, I don't think in any van. I yeah. usually see the hide and go seat, but what is this seat? Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting seat. It's on this limitless swivel. So this, you know, everyone likes to ride forward, but then well, when you're legally. at camp. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> legally it's much safer to ride forward. But when you're at camp, it's nice to live out of the side of the vehicle here. So when you're at camp, this swivels 90 degrees and then going down the road, you can pull this guy. Oh, it's easier from your position, but. I'm sorry, I'm in your position. <laughs> but swivel is forward facing. Wow, totally, and then it tucks out of the way pretty much. Yeah. Now, do you have like a lagoon table to like yep. so use that as a seat? Yeah. We, we make these brackets oh, that mount right here, to the passenger seat. So this allows you to still use the lagoon table with a swivel base. Yeah, so I can swivel this around, swivel this around, now and swivel this around, and yeah. now I have dining for four. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so that, that offset bracket that we build um, lets that table function really well in this space. So this is a show van. Is this like what you're trying to showcase? This, this, like just all different types? Highlighting components that we really like, you know, something that we do on show vehicles. Okay. Also, you know, incorporating new innovative ideas that we've seen you know, come across our plate throughout the year. 
Um, so, you know, we had a client that actually turned us on to this seating system and we thought that was a cool take on using this space, multifunctional. Uh, the Tetra Van Shower is a cool new product. We wanted to show people that. Another client of ours, we built, you know, this kind of Murphy bed workspace modular setup right. um, and so you know we'll, we'll, we'll get into the back here and we you. will oh uh, yeah do you normally spin that around if we're going to showcase the rest here? yeah okay so same thing is the other way i'm just going to release it i am a lighting snob i know kyle is now a lighting snob over time right it's, it, you, you caught that bug buddy right mm -hmm. I did. you've got these upper lights you've got the puck lights I love that like kind of look and design to it. Was that obviously intentional? Yeah, so you kind of have all the different options for lights here. You've got dimmable dome lights, dimmable above cabinet lights. These are really nice for indirect mood lighting at night. You don't need anything harsh. Are they all on different zones? All on different dimmable zones. Okay. Um, you also got your under cabinet lights, which is really nice task lighting. You have, which I don't actually have on. Toe kick lighting? You have toe kick lighting. Um, and one of the ways Did you, you just can... pull out a freaking iPad to control everything. Yeah. So one of the ways you can control things in here is from this iPad. Um, we're using a C zone system. The cool thing about this is you can program different modes. So like what I did when I jumped in here is I turn on what I call work mode, yeah. but you know, I can turn on the other one I've got programmed right now, but you can do whatever yeah. is night mode. So that's going to turn on your reading lights, your above cabinet and your toe kick. So it's going to be kind of an amber glow in here. C zone is what you used for that software, that that, that, Correct. that stuff. Yes. C zone, I believe, also can check water tank levels. Yeah. So some of the things we can do in here. You can show that. So if you can get it without a glare. Yeah. Monitoring. We've got all of our battery monitor stats over here. We've got our fresh and gray tank. Um, there are a whole spectrum of different sensors and functions that we can implement into this. And the cool thing about C Zone is this is more or less open source. So mm -hmm. for a custom shop like ours, we can get really specific in what we're doing and give you the exact function that you want. So this floor plan, I guess, isn't replicated on the normal. This isn't like Luke's floor plan. No. <laughs> yeah, this is just something you guys conjured up, you created as a spec build, and that was it. Yeah. Okay. It's because every client of yours is different. Correct. Wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a lot of front end design. Um, it's cool though, we get to say yes to a lot of things. Sure. You know, a really bad idea, we might steer you in the right direction, but for the like most part- Like a bathtub in the back? I might call that a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we, would, we would explore, you know, what you're what actually you do, yeah. after and, and what it would take to do that. Sometimes I'm just in here and I play like, like a kid. Yeah. You know, and there's like a lot of storage under there. I noticed, now this is wood. I've already done a shop tour with you. I've, yeah. show, you've, I've seen your plywood. That's not a paint though. No, this is Fenix. Fenix, you want to explain what Fenix is? Or Phoenix is what some people call it, but I call it Fenix. Yeah, so this is gonna be a really you know high quality, durable way to get colors in a vehicle. Yep. Uh, another way to accomplish a similar aesthetic is through paint. Paint is more scratchable. Mm -hmm. This is like a highly like hardened exterior surface. So a, is it a high pressure laminate? Correct. Okay. Yeah. You know, as you're throwing gear in and out of here and, you know, bumping and jostling, you know, this is going to stand up to the test of time. You don't have to repaint pretty much ever. Yeah. In fact, you can't. So that, that would be one consideration with a product like this. If you were to, you know, gouge it with something, you know, the, the repair process would probably look more like replacement, which we can help you do. Yeah. But you know, paint, you would touch up but you're gonna do that far more often than Especially, with something right. like this. And I believe this is like fingerless, but finger, like fingerprint -less or yeah. something, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I can't make finger marks on it? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, do you use Fenix up top as well? Yeah, so this is a white, um, white Fenix product. Uh, and then it's this like forest green. I love this green. I really do. green down here. One of my favorite fridge companies uh, of all time, the Isotherm fridge. And it's a door. I, I was actually expecting a, a, a drawer. Yeah, so we do both. Uh, some people like to top load, some people like to front load. Yeah. Um, really personal preference on that. Yeah. There might even be some beer in there from the weekend. There was a little <laughs> bit, but that's okay. We're, you we're and Chad that. didn't drink at all? No, we did not drink at all. I was not drinking much. 
It's under the weather. Is this a full-on closet? Full-on closet. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move out of the way. Yeah, so these closets, you know, can be configured really however you want. There's actually some bedding from the weekend. You can do a closet rod in here. We've got adjustable shelves that go in. Um, this can really accommodate a lot of gear and be configured however the end user is gonna use it. Obviously, you, you were talking about the high price tag of 220, give or take. Out of sight, out of mind, you must have a baller heating system, baller air conditioner, just baller electrical system. Those are the three price jumps. Yep. All right, so what do we got on all three of those, out of sight, out of mind? So, I forget which order you asked me in, Heater. but heating. So we have hydronic in-floor heat in this. We've got hot water, hydronic hot water, as well as forced air. What company was that? So this is an, I know we're, uh, we're it's okay. We're, we're gonna uh, not have a van life tech system in here. Aquahot has uh, a new heating floor zone oh, wow. um, that we've tested out in here. And you know, we're gonna see. He, see. Was, a, he was a little wary to say that because I am a huge fan and a as are we of van life tech. He is too. Yeah, and we install those all the time and they're still a great option. This they is are. something that uh, you know, Aqua Hot's just down the street from us. So oh, okay. we're working with them to test this out. It's a little too hot to really, you know, put it to the test like we've tested the Van Life Tech system. We're filming this at like early summer and it's like a solid 90 degrees outside. Yeah. Have you taken this show van out into winter? No. Not yet. Not so you yet. just finished this? Correct. Okay. Well, we, we finished it before Flagstaff, which was in May. May, which was not cold enough. No, no, no. I mean, like the floor gets warm, but yeah, we have not been able to test this to the same extent. Right. Now, if you open up that cabinet, I believe you see the Aqua Hot. Yeah. So I can kind of, you know, all of these systems are going to be controlled in a similar way, but you've got your heating zone, you've got your floor zone. Whether we're talking about uh, Van Life Tech or this Aqua Hot system, the cool thing about a hydronic floor is you've got a thermal mass and coils coming through the floor. Sure. And that can be your primary zone. So while it's more mild and temperate, you can heat the van from the bottom up, and then as soon as it gets too cold, your forced air zone is going to kick on on top of that. Um, so you have, a, I guess, the secondary forced air just like VLT does. It. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so it's super intuitive as you click on this controller, you just it's tap it to the, settings, yeah. the temperature that you want. It is telling us it's 91 degrees in here right now. I was pretty damn close, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you turn the AC on, which I guess coming to that next. Yes, AC is next, which is, it looks like a Dometic to me. Yeah, a Dometic RTX 2000. Um, so that's going to be a 12 volt AC unit. You can get really long run times off of a unit like that in a small insulated van. Now, if your client was like, well, I would rather have a Nomadic cooling or I'd rather have a Cruising Comfort, which I think you've also installed. Yep, those are the two other big hitters that we use all the time. One thing to consider with a Cruising Comfort is it's an undermount yep. unit. And so you're ducting that up to the ceiling because you always want to dispense your cold air at the top. This layout would be fine to run that ducting. Some layouts don't lend themselves well to that. And obviously you're gonna pay more for the labor of figuring all that out. Yep. Yeah, I get it. It's a, I get it. It's the consumer has to understand this and that's why I do what I do. What's lovely about this layout in particular, we are in a 144 Sprinter, I believe, yep. right? Yeah. So what's lovely about this is you have all this workstation. Talk to me about that. This is a, looks like eight foot slab. Yeah, uh, it's actually like nine feet. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Part of what makes this layout cool and this van all around, you, we've seen a couple different convertible pieces. We wanted this space to live like a 170 or 170 extended without dedicating the space to the bed all the time. Right. So, you know, the other morning we were in here fire lining breakfast burritos off the cooktop. You can stand back here, use this as a working desk, you can haul tall things. You can also use it like a traditional raised bed setup. So this is gonna fold down. Now that that latch was, it seems pretty light. That's never opened on you while driving? No. Wow, and we, actually <laughs> I can attest to that because I have some footage of me doing a severe brake check. That thing, I mean, that, I mean your suspension is crazy, which we're gonna get to later, but bed sorry yeah. i got sidetracked my add <laughs> you know everyone's seen a raised bed set up with flares yep. you can leave this set up you can put your bikes in the garage you could use it as a raised bed setup but if you want more space in here we design our mattress to be folded up with the bedding on it um and so you just do that pretty much one hand that was you can put nice. that away that was easy yeah now, what mattress was that? Because that was a nice mattress. Yeah, so this is the same one you slept on this weekend. Was it really? Yeah, the company is Tocta. 
Um, they make a lot of our custom mattresses for us. We can work with them to do everything from, you know, the notches for the flares, you know, specific hinge points for creative solutions like this, and they're super comfortable. I'm a big guy, and I slept on a four inch mattress, four inch. I believe, and yeah. I, I slept like an angel. It came down with a little something, but either way, it still slept like an angel. Biggest question a lot of people ask, hey, bed is great, swivel thingamajiggy's awesome, I need a toilet and I need a shower. Yep. Well, the shower, we already did. Never shower. Mind. Never mind, that was my bad. <laughs> toilet. Yeah, so right here, it's gonna pull out on 500 pound slides. Okay. It's not gonna be the same amount of privacy as a full wet bath, which we do plenty of. Sure. Um, but again, we're trying to make as much out of this small space. You sacrifice a little bit of privacy, but you can still go to the bathroom on the road. And uh, I forgot about the last out of sight, out of mind, which was the electrical system. Yep. Is that visible here? Yeah, you can take a peek at it here. So again, all Victron components throughout. You've got 600 amp hours of lithium. We have 390 watts of walkable solar on the roof rack. You've got your 3000 watt inverter and then all of the standard breakers, fuses. Who'd you use for a walkable solar panel? It's a Go Power okay. Flex unit. Yeah. Very impressive. Uh, ceiling, it looks like it is a, don't tell me, stained pine? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, walnut stain on a pine. Yeah, you stained pine, which is interesting because pine has a different porous than like a poplar would. Yeah. So, but I like it because it, yeah, it's you, a different knot. I, it's not Exactly, that's why you'd use pine. It has a really cool knot structure to it. Um, I mean, we, again, we can use any material that people want. Um, this is going to give it, you know, Naughty's typically a little bit more rustic and brings a little bit more texture. I love the exposed screws too. Some people like to hide them or whatever, but if you do it this way, it's perfect looking. Yeah. And really part, well done. Part of that is, you know, everything is maintainable. So mm -hmm. if you as the end user or us or another service center ever needs to get access to anything, we haven't like glued any panels that become inaccessible or you know, if you needed to pull something, you can certainly do that. Before we go out to the outside, is there anything that I possibly have missed in here? I mean, I, we went over a lot in a short amount of time. I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it. Uh, fabric on the walls, marathon weave, it looks like. Yep, this is your Duramax gray mix. So this is gonna be the lightest gray um, that they offer. Super popular. We probably use this more than any other color. As a spec van, who designed this? Was this you? Ross and I usually come together and, okay. and look at what we've liked over the last year and, and put together something that, that we want to use for the summer and that we want to show people. Extremely earthy in here. I mean, that was uh, what you guys were going for. Yeah. I mean, this screams Colorado to me. Yes. Which is where you are. Yeah. Uh, is this a walnut butcher? Yeah, this is a walnut butcher block. Another non-cheap item. <laughs> All right, let's go to the outside where also a lot of non-cheap <laughs> items are. So now we're in the back of the van, obviously, and I already talked about this at the top of the video, but you use one product predominantly through the entire yeah. outside components, which are who? Aluminous. Yeah. So we, we vend a number of, you know, exterior gear manufacturers. It's pretty cool to keep things consistent on one build. I mean, they match. If yeah. You, if you do it, and by the way, they're new running boards. Are Sweet. sick. Yeah. You know, the feedback that, you know, has been provided over the years is the Nerf bars are awesome, but they give a little bit of give when yeah. you step on them and they're tough on dogs because really? they, they're not, they don't have that closed back of the step. Um, now they're okay. Now they're okay. I don't know what you call them, the Nerf bars too or whatever, but yeah. they're pretty darn cool. And then you obviously have their whole setup here. You have two ladder access up to the roof. Yeah. So you've got your ladder <laughs> tire carrier on the back. <coughs> you've got a jerry can box on there. Uh, I think they call this their backpack, but it's essentially a molly panel back here. You can mount, you know, bike trays, vertical bike trays, boxes, jerry cans, whatever, whatever you, you want. want. Extra diesel, extra water, whatever you want. Yep. And it obviously fits exactly to what a five gallon jerry can exactly. would be. Exactly, you can fit three back there. You can? Yeah. Now, because I'm talking about water, I didn't ask you how big your water tank is. Yeah, so this has 30 gallons of fresh water wow. inside and 15 gallons of gray on the outside. Aluminous rack. I believe this is their new one. You just debuted it. Yeah, we debuted this in Flagstaff. You know, we were super excited to work with them to bring this out. Uh, the new rack looks stunning. Uh, I you love see it. Baja design lights throughout. You've got load lights on the rear and the side, and then you've got that big 50 inch light bar in the front. One of the things that you're known for is this bad Larry right here. I love this thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it right, but let's see. Did I do it right? Yeah. Might be locked. No. I just. Nope, I'm just one. weak. Yeah. I'm just weak. No, 
Your words, not mine. This is what some call the happy hour table. Do you actually have a name for it? We call it the Max Tracks table. Max Tracks table. And the reason is, is because normally they have Max Tracks right here. Yeah. What can this hold? We weight tested this just with VHB tape to 350 pounds. Um, so about 350. Yeah. I mean, that can hold Jared. I'm not going to do it on your show van, your $200,000 show van, but that's the, this thing's baller. Actually, it is so baller that when Kyle saw it, while we were here, he's like, I'm buying one right now. And he bought one and now he's shipping it. <laughs> he's shipping, or he's not shipping it, he's bringing it back to Cali with him because yeah. he likes this thing so much. Yeah. And you can put it on either side. You can put it on, with the 144, with, you, you gotta watch out for the sliding door yep. interference, but on the 170, putting it on the passenger side so it's under the awning is pretty sweet. Obviously the aluminous, uh, well, people can't climb up or bears can't climb yeah, up. Yeah, they call this the ladder locker. Okay, um, is it open? So, makes it harder for unwanted people to access the roof. You can also throw a roto pack or something on here. Nice. Um, a little extra storage, make it multifunctional. Um, you know what, with the CR Lawrence windows it looks like, boom, and is that also CR Lawrence? Yeah, CR Lawrence half slide in the flare space flare. Flare space flares, I mean, it's almost a necessity when it comes to sleeping across yeah. the backside there. Uh, I'm gonna open this up. Look at that, they even put a handle hole there? Yeah. I love that. Um, the reason I wanted to open this up is because you have a bike mount right here. You yeah, and this is kind of a cool mount we make that integrates with your L-Track, so it's adjustable. So you can you know, angle and Tetris your handlebars together, height adjustable on the fork, um, so you're gonna be able to get most bikes and back here. And you make this in house? Yeah. That's nifty, I like that. Well, what did I miss? We missed the big thing. We did miss the big thing. Before we end this video, we missed the biggest thing in my opinion. We're gonna take a look at it on the side over here. Can you see it over here? Get a little light in here. So okay, what, what is going on? Cause this is a new thing for, uh, for you guys, Ross Monster. Yeah, so we are uh, the Colorado installers for Evictus. Uh, this is kind of the newest, baddest thing on the suspension front. Well, uh, I tested this, like not as much as you tested it. I believe the Invictus guy came out. Yeah, it was pretty cool. They came out, they trained us, all of our guys in the shop, got to test drive it, appreciate what this is and what it's doing. Like a roller coaster ride, it was pretty wild. It le legitimately a roller coaster ride. Kyle and I just took a ride in it. Yeah, and when we talk about suspension, you know, the off-road use case is really obvious. The yeah. on-road attributes are less talked about but really more important because we're all spending 95 percent of our time on the highway being able to stop and have the original vehicle dynamics work as they were designed to yep. or do a double lane change or you know dip a tire into a soft shoulder and come back on you know this is really going to take care of you in those situations all right so what is really the why is this way better than kind of other suspension markets out there so uh, they're using a larger diameter shock than anyone else. So that allows them to move more fluid, which is both better cooling, but, and I might not have this totally down yet. Okay, okay. But essentially like what's specific to them and the guys at Evictus were telling me is you kind of get the best of both worlds through digressive performance, which is kind of your stiff race car feel and then your linear performance, which is more of like your long travel trophy truck. What does something like this cost compared to, I'm not gonna say the other ones, but another suspension upgraded kit? Yeah, this is definitely gonna be more expensive. Um, you're looking at about $12,000 installed yeah. on this. Uh, there are great suspension options in the $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 range as well. But this is the Rolls Royce of suspension you're getting it like that's what people have to understand yeah what would you say the outside components cost of this entire rig including the suspension yeah your best guesstimate like fifty thousand, probably right and yeah you said at the beginning of the video this is a 210 or 220 yeah something right around there so you should subtract the all the outside components with the suspension i mean this is a very inexpensive build yeah, so I mean, the cool thing about building custom is you can spend money where you want to. Yeah. You know, do you need all the Baja Designs lights? Probably not. Some they're, do, they're some pretty, want They're it. pretty cool yeah. to have, and some people do need them, but you know, you, you can spend your money where you want to. You know, more batteries, more water, more power, great. Or more suspension, more 
wheels, tires, exterior gear, all of it, you know, or, it's up to you. I usually try to tell people to do the build on the inside and then you can add all this stuff as time progresses. And, and we say the same thing, do right? You? It doesn't cost us a dollar more to install this ladder in a year from now as it does right out of the gate. And one of our friends, our mutual friends, Chad, that's kind of what he was doing, yeah. you know? Like he's been adding on over time. And it's always easier to add than subtract, right? Right. And so, you know, we definitely believe in designing the vehicle correctly from the start, but also everyone, you know, I mean, Chad has learned a lot yeah. over living in his van for a year. You know, he knows more today than he did a year ago, for sure. For sure. Kyle, you've been living in your van for a year. You've learned a lot in the past year. And Well, I can't thank you enough. Uh, for showcasing your show van. Uh, if I haven't already, we're going to also show the Baja truck. Right, is that the best way to put yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously thank you to Kyle uh, for being my amazing camera operator while I am so a little under the weather here. Please end with uh, how we can find you, best way to find you, maybe social sites, and anything you want to say to the audience to give them a little bit of wisdom. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about vehicles, what it looks like to build a custom vehicle, whether it's vans, trucks, or something we haven't seen, uh, check out our website. There's phone numbers, emails, fill out our contact form. Uh, we're gonna get back to you really quickly. We're happy to answer all questions. Um, you know, This is a journey for everybody and we wanna be a part of it. Within a first call, we're gonna put together a detailed estimate for you. You're gonna have a really good idea of what working with us is gonna look like. That's awesome. Uh, where do we find you? Uh, Rossmonster.com is our website. Rossmonster is our Instagram. Rossmonster is our YouTube, yep. Facebook. You know, across the board. Yeah, social channels. Awesome. Uh, if you haven't seen it already or if I haven't posted it yet, just wait for the shop tour of everything behind the scenes of how this thing was actually built, which is crazy to me. And Ross, the other owner, is also in that video. So thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you. Later.